live and pre-recorded. This is the Red Ticket Blues Podcast. We are here. It is March. Listen to that. Oh, that's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. The brackets are out. The selection committee has made their, well, selections. And, well, by the way, I'm Brian Buckley, and this is being recorded on March 16th to hit the internets tomorrow. <clears throat> you need to hear an Irish accent, right? St. Patrick's Day, March 17th. How is everybody? A lot to talk about today. A lot to talk about. There's obviously the NCAA tournament. We know who's playing who. You'll get my predictions, comments, suggestions, whatever else I have to say. We'll get into a little baseball. The Yankees have announced their second baseman starting already, Stephen Drew. Why the hell not? He's batting 105. He's earned it. Uh, just a little, quick little synopsis of uh, the transpirings going on in the NFL in the past few weeks. As It has been a madhouse with people switching zip codes like it's ugh, going out of style. That was on the tip of my tongue. I had to say it. And we'll also get into, yeah, I already told you, we'll talk about some baseball. And I, uh, I had a little conversation with the sports pope himself, Mike Francesa, about some college basketball. Brian in New Haven. And, What's up, Brian? Yep, that, that's him. Thank you. It's my show, though. I introduce you. You don't introduce me. Uh, and we talked about if Duke was a deserving number one seed or not. And we'll we'll listen to that phone call a little bit. He got a tad bit angry at me. Tad bit angry at me. But that's at the end of the end of the program. You'll have to listen to the other stuff to get to the good. The, get to the dessert. Uh, as always, you can follow me at Brian Buck thirteen. Yeah, we're starting the whoring off early. Not going to save it to the end of the show. And you could find that you could find the Red Ticket Blues podcast. You can find it on where can you find it? You can find it on YouTube, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, whatever you like. But enough is enough. Let's get to the tournament. It starts this Thursday. The brackets came out, and we'll also talk about. Excuse me. I saw. I was in the building in the XL Center on Saturday to see UConn try to keep their hopes alive. They disappointed me and everyone. Eventually, the game Saturday against Tulsa was great. But they did not have enough firepower at the end. And let's 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 be frank; they're pretty shitty. So they're they're lucky they even got to that position. So let's let's start with the teams that are actually playing in the real tournament, not the uh, NIT, which UConn will attempt to dominate. We'll start with the number one seeds: Kentucky, Duke. Jeez, <laughs> Kentucky, Duke, Wisconsin, and Villanova. Uh, obviously, everyone is. It's right now. There are bets. Kentucky versus the field. Kentucky is the number one. To, and let's let's keep this in mind. This is how good Kentucky is. Kentucky is the number one seed in the same Midwest bracket with number two Kansas, a team they beat earlier this year by 32 points. That's how good Kentucky is. The seed below them, they beat by over 30 points. And that Kansas team doesn't have Cliff Alexander, their star freshman, as the NCAA continues to investigate some sort of loan that his mother got. Typical NCAA procrastination and allowing allowing time to pass. And what an opportune time. Not an opportune time, but what a convenient time for them to just do this and screw with this kid. Maybe he did do something wrong, but you're not even letting him play in the tournament. Yeah, I get 7.1 points a game, 5.3 rebounds. That's something. That's a big deal on a college basketball team. But we'll see. they are Kansas. They have a reputation of falling apart anyways. So what can you do there? Uh, I'm looking at the brackets. And I'll tell you my upsets right now because that, that's what you came here for, right? Because my uh, absolute expert analysis. If you want a sleeper right now, it's Providence. Providence is probably going to take care of the play-in game, whoever that is. They're going to beat Oklahoma. And I see them getting to the Sweet 16, and I'm not sure, but they might beat Virginia in that eastern bracket. I don't know. Virginia's down. They got their leading scorer, Justin Anderson, back. A team that doesn't score that much anyways, but he was the leading scorer. He was the leader of that team. He's come back for two games, scored a whopping zero points in the ACC tournament. ACC. I said C. Three Cs. I just want you to know which conference tournament we're talking about. Uh, so... I could see Virginia going down, maybe even against Michigan State, but I'm I'm not going to stick my name on that one. We have Gonzaga. Let's see. We have number one, Duke, in the South region. I see it being Duke and Iowa State in the regionals. And I could – Iowa State, I like Iowa State. I could even see them beating Duke, but I think Duke's going to come out of the South. Well, let me tell you who I think is going to come out of the East. I still think Villanova's going to take it away in the East. 
Oh, pick and chalk, Brian, huh? Pick and chalk. Uh, I do think it's going to come down to Arizona and Wisconsin in the Western Division. Let's see if you got any big upsets. I, I'm, I'm not a big upset guy. I, I, I know a lot of people are hot on SF Austin in the Southern uh, region. Utah's a good team. They're going to take care of business there. Let's see what else. I see Notre Dame coming against Kentucky in the Midwest. I'm all over the place, as you can tell. Uh, you're, if you're at home looking at your brackets along with it, I'm jumping from, from region to region. I mean, frankly, I don't care. But, yeah, we got Notre Dame versus Kentucky. It, I almost feel like this entire tournament is almost a waste of time because it's so apparent that Kentucky is going to win. It's not that it's so apparent. I think I'm just afraid to pick anyone else other than Kentucky. I feel it would just be a bad decision. So you got Kentucky's going to come out of the Midwest. They'll take care of Notre Dame. Wisconsin and Arizona is intriguing. Arizona's a good team, but who have they played? I mean, they, their, their losses are terrible. Oregon State, UNLV, they didn't really schedule a very difficult out-of-conference game. Uh, schedule uh, this year so they didn't really have a lot of opportunities for big wins but I could see them getting to the west taking on Wisconsin I could see Arizona coming out of there so this is what I'm going to say this is my final four I'm going to say it right now damn it yeah okay I'm going to say Kentucky out of the east no Kentucky out of the midwest we're going to go Iowa State out of the south we're going to say Wisconsin no, I'm going to say Arizona out of the West. And that Eastern one, man, I don't know. I think I'm falling in love with Providence too much. I almost have them in the Final Four. You know what the hell with that? I'll say it. Got to take some risks in life, right? And this is one of them. Me making predictions that's on a podcast. That's risky. So Providence. Yeah, they almost took Villanova out in the Big East Tournament the other day, so why not? Yeah, so that's what we got. We got Providence, Kentucky, Arizona, and Iowa State. That's my Final Four. Mark it down. Put a star next to it. Hang something on it. Hang a star on it. Put a star next to it. I don't care. So that's... Providence is a six seed. Okay. I need to get off this Providence thing. But anyways, I was thinking earlier about all these seeds because everyone's got an opinion about who got shafted. Do they deserve that seed? First four in, first four out, yada, 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 all this. Now, if we did this with life, what kind of seed would you be? I'm talking like Kentucky number one is, you're like millionaire, millionaire, billionaire. Basically, we'll put it this way. You can uh, orchestrate a Jay-Z Big Pimpin' video on your day off if you just feel like it. And that's real life, not a video. That's a number one seed. A 16 seed is probably, let's say, a man living under a bridge with clothes soaked in urine and feces and he thinks cans coming out of a... No, beans. Beans in a can is delicacy for a special Saturday night. So where would you rank yourself? And I was thinking about that with me. Where would I? I mean, I'm not a baller. I don't have a lot of money. But, I, you know, I have enough money to live. I, I think what you have to realize is there's a lot of people above you. and there's Well, there's a lot of people above you that are better off than you. But there's a lot more below you. I'm married, so that's good. I have a job. I own a car. So those are good things, right? I think with the amount of dirt bags that we have in the country, and there are tons of, let's just say globally, the amount of dirt bags we have in the world, I'm going to give myself, I'm going to give myself a six seed. Maybe that's why I'm gravitating so much to Providence. I'm going to give myself a six seed. A uh, 16. Yeah, I'm a six seed. The six seeds have won it all, too, by the way. I'm not sure how that equates to what I'm really talking about. I don't know what winning it all actually means. I don't know if you have that moment in life when you win it all. Unless you're outside of a competitive... Unless you're inside some sort of competitive... I don't want to say sports competitive anything. Nature of competitiveness. But all right, let's let's move along, because I'm sort of just zoning out here. That's that That's okay, though. That's all right. That's all right. So what kind of seed would I be? All right, no, I'm just kidding. So I'll tell you about my experience on Saturday. I uh, went to the XL Center with a few friends to see the University of Husky, U- University of Connecticut Huskies take on the Tulsa Golden 
Golden Eagles? I don't even remember. But I'll tell you, 40 minutes of a basketball game, I'd say 35 of them were awful. You kind of had no business being in that game. Guard Ryan Boatwright uh, willed them back in, and the last five minutes were great. We even snuck down, sitting in third row, I'd say, right off the floor. Beautiful time. Great time had by all, but the egg that was laid on Sunday. Uh, they shouldn't even have been in that game, too, and they were. That that conference sucks. The American Athletic Conference is terrible. Let, let's be honest. And Bo Wright, what was he, 1 of 13? He hurt his shoulder. Rodney Purvis was out of control. I forget what his entire, uh, his, his total points were, but it was in the 25 range when UConn scored 40-something. Uh, and I'll say this. I may come across as a spoiled fan when I root for the University of Connecticut and they won the national championship last year. But Kevin Ollie is not a good coach. They won last year because Shabazz Napier took a lot of bad shots but made them. And there were seniors on that team. Next year, that is going to be a bad team in a bad conference. And that can put your program back years. And I say Kevin Ollie's a bad coach not a good coach. He makes no in-game adjustments whatsoever. Maybe he's good at other spots, stuff that you don't see on television. But I mean, there, there was a spot, uh, I think it was Friday night against Cincinnati. They shot seven straight threes, just heaving them up. No, 10 seconds into the shot clock. No plays, nothing. What, what is that? How, how can you... I, I, I could just shudder to think Jim Calhoun with that sort of stuff going on. I, I can't... I, I don't even want to think about it. It's it's scary. But anyways, uh, moving on. That is the NCAA tournament. That top, that tips off on Thursday. I'm looking forward to it. Always love March Madness. Always love hearing that. And you also, in Connecticut, you get to hear the women's, uh, the University of Connecticut women's basketball team. It just dominates. And we get to have those conversations. Men all across the state know this. We have these conversations with people, men and women, who know very little about sports, who honestly think the UConn women could beat the UConn men. And if I had talked about this in a podcast before, I apologize. But I'm just bringing it up again. In your dreams, that is not happening. You are a lunatic. You're a crazy person. And it has nothing to do with, oh, women can't play sports, get back in the kitchen. It has nothing to do with that. Those, those girls play hard. And they kick ass, okay? But they can't beat a men's team. But just like a college team can't beat an NBA team. It won't happen. Get your head out of your ass. Moving on. Uh, let's see. What else we have to talk about today? Let's We'll check down in the Sunshine State in Florida. And spring training is underway. Like I said, just quick news and notes. You Darvish, Texas Rangers pitcher, after missing the last few games... Last year with some injuries, unfortunately, will go under the knife of Tommy John surgery. And Yankee fans just looking at that, saying, that will soon be Tanaka. Mashihiro Tanaka. That will soon be him. You can't force a player to get surgery. No one wants to be cut open with a knife. I, I can attest to that. I, I don't want to get cut open with a knife either. But uh, as a fan, completely taking the human element out of it, you wish he had gotten the Tommy John surgery because it's just inevitable that he's going to have elbow issues and... We're gonna we're, that tear that he has is going to get larger and larger, and he's just gonna need to get it Matt Harvey route and be out for eighteen months. Uh, ugh, you just know it's gonna happen. Cliff Lee, I think, has pitched his last game. He just went out of the sixty day DL today with the Philadelphia Phillies, and I think he has some sort of option. Well, if he were to pitch two hundred innings this year, he'd get about twenty five million dollars from the Phillies. If he doesn't meet that, there's a twelve and a half million buyout, twenty half million dollar buyout. Just want to clarify we're talking dollars so i think he's throwing his last pitch doesn't want to get his arm cut open like i said people tend to not have their body opened with sharp objects so what the hell why do it if you don't have to and he's going to collect his million and he's going to call it a career uh checking in staying in the nl east we'll look at the new york mets and tommy john is struck there again to zach wheeler and so he'll be out for the year with tommy john surgery Mets GM Sandy Alderson didn't seem very concerned. He said, yeah, we, we expected this. You know, we, we, it's not really shocking. You know, they are so full of crap. I mean, it's like he's following in the footsteps of Omar Minaya with the back talk. Not the back talk, the double talk. 
I told you really? before. You, you I love Willie huh? Randolph. You, you okay? knew his his that this was going to happen. They're they're just liars. They're liars. I mean, Mania did, and, and I don't understand the medical team with with the Mets. What is wrong with them? I mean, remember Ryan Church a few years ago had a concussion. They threw him on a plane on a cross country flight. That's the way the Mets operate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, that's how. That's how you're gonna meet them. That's how you're gonna meet them in a hospital or more, whatever. Oh, Christ, who knows? A Rod hit his first home run of the season, so that's good, I guess. Is what it is. Uh, what else is going on in the major leagues? Uh, I know Joel Madden was a little upset with the Cubs. He's the first year manager there with the Chicago Cubs about some of the players uh, hot dogging it and uh, posing and. You have to think about it. I know people like to associate players with the histories of teams. You know, the Cubs have it once since 1908. Well, you know, Starlin Castro wasn't on the team in 1908. So these guys, they take into consideration the fans, uh, everything they've gone through with it throughout the years, but they're not fans of the team. They don't wear it on their sleeve. That doesn't say, that, that doesn't mean that they're allowed to hot dog it, but I'm just saying because people are, people are, Floating the picture out there and say, they haven't won anything. How do they know? Well, no shit, they haven't won anything. It's been over a, over a century. But I don't think they're thinking about that. And Joel Madden just said, you know what? Let's try to act like we've been here. He said all athletes are like that now. And he's sort of not embracing it, but not completely turning it off. So it is what it is. I don't know if the Cubs are going to be as great as everyone thinks. They are going to be better. The White Sox will be better. Chicago will be a happy baseball town as both their teams will improve. But to the likeliness of getting to the playoffs we shall see in that area uh what else going on in baseball anything else i'm trying to think off the top of my head um we still don't really know what's going on with josh hamilton that that story has sort of died down but nah, i guess you really can't do much i mean it's still march 16th they're still working things out i mean i just turn it on sometimes to make me think that it's warm outside no, we're not even really paying attention to the game but Hey, Steven Drew is, uh, like I said, he's the starting uh, second baseman for the Yankees. He was named that last week, which I don't understand. I mean, obviously, they, they, they brought him in here for $5 million. And so he's probably going to play. But the younger guys like Ref Snyder and Perella, you know, they're the future of the team. Maybe you should let them work a little bit harder to try to think that they maybe were in the competition. J.D., J.D., did I say J.D. before? Steven Drew is not the future of the Yankees. And if he is, I don't want to live in that world. That's a bad world to live in. Terrible world. Awful world. <sighs> I don't know. It's still, you know, with UConn out now, I'm focusing in on the Yankees, and it's something I don't think I really want to focus it on. It's a scary sight. Scary, scary, scary. Moving over to the NFL, the AFC East is revamping. Everything. Well, except the Patriots, actually. They're cutting Vince Wilfork and letting Darrell Rivas go as he went back to his old team, the one that gave him the most money, the New York Jets. And he's joined by their, his own battery mate, the the Antonio Cromartie. I don't know why he wouldn't be prefaced with a the there, but I guess maybe when you have nine kids, you're sired the Antonio Cromartie. Uh, I made that one up on the fly. That was not even in my notes, so thank you. Uh we also got Brandon Marshall on the team now, wide receiver. Disgruntled, usually. Uh, but I, I guess maybe not you. I should take that back. Not all the time. Sometimes. He's always got some comment to make. But he is with, with the uh, Jets now. As he left the Chicago Bears after about three or four years. And let's say the Bills, Percy Harvin, uh, just signed today, actually. Um, boy. You know, the AFCs, they're revamping, and I'm not even talking about all of them, right? Uh, let's see, the Miami uh, brought in Indomic and Sue. We already talked about that. Where was I going with this? They've revamped. Poor production. But uh, the main team I wanted to talk about, honestly, was the Philadelphia Eagles. And a lot of people are asking, what the hell is Chip Kelly doing? What in God's name is he doing? And it was even the, the cherry on top of the Sunday, the coup de gras. Tim Tebow working out with the team. He's allowed to work out. Maybe they just wanted to see him run around with his shirt off. I don't know. He likes doing that. Uh, but you trade Nick Foles for Sam Bradford, the off-injured quarterback, who we really don't know what he is because he's injured so much he's barely on the field to play football. 
They send LaShawn McCoy to Buffalo out there. See, I knew it was somebody. Jeez. Whew, too much March Madness in my brain right now. I forgot LaShawn McCoy to Buffalo. That's the other uh, big, big acquisition. And first they brought in Ryan Matthews. And as a fantasy football player. Yeah, that's me. Fantasy football player. As if that's some sort of achievement. Like I accomplished something. I hear Ryan Matthews. I say, Ryan Matthews? Ryan Matthews stinks. That's because if you have ever had Ryan Matthews on your team, he is always hurt. And he's never playing. So he's always a high draft pick, too. And he he's he's <laughs> he's unreliable. Uh, he did rush for 330 yards last year, which is not good. Yeah. Excuse me. Did you hear that? Ooh. Uh, but you got to think, what are the Eagles really doing? You, you have to look. You have to hope that Chip Kelly, if you're an Eagles fan, you have to hope that they're done. Oh, jeez, I almost forgot. They also brought in DeMarco Murray. So... That's no slouch. The guy ran for just under 1,900 yards last year. twenty Almost $20 million in guaranteed money. But that does, that does lock up the, uh, the backfield. But you still got to look at things and go, huh, Sam Bradford, huh? I don't know. It's almost like Chip Kelly's like Christopher Columbus in a way. He, he's doing crazy stuff that everyone thinks is nuts. It's, it's like he's saying the world's flat and... Well, he, no, but people are saying the world's flat, and he's saying, no, you're wrong. And and he's saying, well, I got DeMarco Murray, and it's a, the, it's almost like comparison to Christopher Columbus. He's, he sails a ship. Okay, all right, so he's got something, but you're still nuts. I think the work's incomplete, and he's still got a lot of work to do. But we'll have a lot of time to go over the NFL. It was frantic. I don't know why the NFL does that. And maybe it's just to create this pandemonium where they – they start to allow these players to sign two days before the actual announcement of the actual free agency. So the NFL knows what they're doing when it comes to promotion. It is the most popular sport in America without a doubt. So I guess what we'll finally do... Actually, you know what? I just want to go back to baseball for one quick second. Pete Rose has petitioned to get into the Hall of Fame to new commissioner Rob Manfred and... I, for one, I know everyone has an opinion on Pete Rose. Mine is, he does not belong in the Hall of Fame. Pete Rose knew it was illegal to gamble on baseball, and he did it anyways. And my number one thing to anyone that says, well, the steroid guys, what well, they shouldn't be, they should not be allowed to. Well, they're not getting in the Hall of Fame, but if they, they probably will. If people are going to lighten up to them, they are going to be allowed into the Hall of Fame. You can see it with numbers. They're increasing every year for suspected guys. Maybe not guys that actually admit it, but suspected guys are getting closer and closer to the entrance of the Hall of Fame. But I will say this about Pete Rose. I will say something. That that was the dramatic pause. I'll say this. Pete Rose was banned for baseball because he gambled. That was a message to the rest of the league. That was a message to the players. What the repercussions of what can happen if you break this rule, this sacred rule that is posted in every major league locker room not to do. And you know what? How many gambling issues have we had since Pete Rose was banned from baseball? Zero. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a deterrent. A deterrent. That's why he won't get in. He will. You know when he. You know when he may get in. When he's dead. They will never let him see himself. He will never get to experience the enshrinement. He will never get to see his bust. Well, it's not really a bust. It's a plaque. Excuse me. He'll never get to see his plaque in Cooperstown. He will be six feet under worm food. You get the drift. Dead. D a d. Dead. Got it. All right. And finally tonight, I, I, I tantalized you. Or well, I teased you with some tantalizing, some nuggets of amazingness when I, Brian Buckley, called Great Sports Hope, Great Sports Hope, Great Sports Pope Mike Francesa today to talk about the, uh, he disagreed that Duke was deserving of a number one seed. Well... I kind of agree, but at the same time, I didn't think there was anyone worthy of a two that should have been a one. I didn't think Duke's resume was uh, profoundly a number one, without a doubt. But Mike thought that Arizona may 
well, not may. He was quite forceful. I don't think there was any there was any question about it. There was there wasn't any distinguishing. Uh, we didn't have to distinguish anything. I think he made himself pretty clear that he thought Arizona should have been a number one seed. We can listen to that phone call right now. Brian in New Haven, what's up, Brian? Hey, Mike. Uh, I heard you talking about how you didn't think Duke deserved the number no, one. No, absolutely seed. not. A- okay. a- a- absolutely. How, so who how, did? How, can, how Arizona? Arizona's losses are awful. Arizona went unbeaten in, in their conference and in their conference tournament. Duke, they lost to UNLV. Duke did not. Listen, I don't care if a team has a bad night one night in the year. That's not what it's about. Duke lost by 20 points in, in to Miami. Arizona is the only team outside of Wisconsin in one game that have lost to three teams that weren't even in the Arizona, top 100. Wait a second. Explain this. How does Duke not win their conference regular season, not make it to their conference final, and get a one seed? If they made it to the conference final, would they, should they have did a one Did they seed? get to the conference final? They did not. How can they get a one seed without doing either of those? What are Wisconsin, won, Wisconsin won the regular season and the conference tournament. Arizona won the regular season and the conference tournament. Villanova won the regular season and the conference tournament. That that really doesn't really mean much to me. Why not? I mean, well, well let's go by. You want to go by RPI? Who's got a higher RPI? Arizona or Duke? Arizona by one spot. That's enough. Again, how many different things do you need? And they took them out of their region. They didn't make them number one in their region. They had to move. They actually created, they moved Kentucky out of the area of their natural interest, the number one team in the country. I mean, I mean, that is the beauty of Mike Francesa. Whatever your point is, if you scream loud enough, you win. You're the winner. Uh, it, I, I, I actually enjoy calling Mike and antagonizing him. And I, I, I try to stay relevant. I don't call too much. You don't want to saturate the product. Am I taking myself a little too seriously? Oh, yes, I am. But I feel like I should call Mike every once in a while and, you know, just just a touch base. I'm a little hurt today. I feel like our friendship kind of took a nosedive. But I feel like if we, we get together and reconcile, well, if we get together talk, maybe there could be some sort of reconciliation. I, I just... I, he has to hear me out. I just wish he'd let me on and talk all day. We could just talk about, talk things out, you know, like bros. But another day, Mike, another day. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been great. I've kept you here long enough. And I just want to thank all of you for listening to the Red Ticket Blues podcast, the award-winning Red Ticket Blues podcast. What award? Don't worry about it. You can always listen to more of my just humorous quips on a daily basis, hourly, minutely basis, on Twitter, at BrianBuck13. You can also listen to the podcast on YouTube, iTunes, or TuneIn Radio. And you can always subscribe to those and get those boom, lickety split. I'm snapping my fingers. March Madness. Boom, boom, boom. All right. I kept you here long enough. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for listening. I'm out of here. <laughs>